Okay, uh, let's begin. First of all, I have been asked by the SCA um, to announce that everybody should maintain uh, and should uh, take the advisements of all the medical and government officials in order to make sure that we're all practicing the social distancing rules that have been in effect. Um, we uh, also want to make sure to, to remember, uh, to keep in our minds the health and the speedy recovery of Mr. Stanley Cheer, one of the founders of the SCA. Um, so let's begin. Uh, bef before I begin the actual topic, I just want to talk about uh, two things to get us into the mood about thinking. Um, you know, it's very, very interesting that the houses have now been overturned by our uh, families and ourselves starting to clean for Pesach. Um, and it's very interesting that we're searching for all the chametz that we have all over our homes. And um, I think that what we learn um, from Harambam Hilchot Ta'anit, Perik Aleph, is not to take any situation in our lives lightly and always to use um, the situations that we're experiencing, uh, positive or negative, as an opportunity to reflect and do some internal uh, accounting. Um, and Harambam would say that it's a midat achzarut to let a situation pass uh, without taking notice and using it as a, a hint to do some personal accounting. Um, and the fact that we're searching at the same time for physical hametz, we should also be searching for uh, the, the things and the character traits in, in our own self that are good and work on them and on that are negative and to get rid of them. Um, so I want to ask, I want to start the class with the, with the following question. What differentiates tonight, which means from all the other nights, specifically, we know that there is a mitzvah, according to many of the rabbis who count all the mitzvot, there is a mitzvah to remember Yesiyah Mitzrayim every single day. What is the difference between that and the specific mitzvah of the Haggadah, Lela said it, to tell over the story of Yesiyah Mitzrayim? The mitzvah itself, right, you're familiar with this pasuk, the mitzvah itself to mention Yesiyah Mitzrayim every single day, 365 days of the year, comes from Sefer Debarim, Perek Tezayin, Pasuk Gimel. It says, Lo tochal alav hametz, shivat yamim tochal alav matzot, lechem oni, ki bechipazon yatsata me'eres v'sraim, leman tzizkor et yom setecha me'eres v'sraim, kol yeme hayecha. This is actually a pasuk we have included in the Haggadah. And here from this pasuk, we learn Harambam in Hilchot Kiryat Shema Perek Aleph Halakha Gimel says that this is the source of the pasuk, that we have to mention Yesiyah Mitzrayim every single day. Specifically in the context over there, it says, well, why are you mentioning uh, Yesiyah Mitzrayim? When do we mention it? During our tefillah. Some people think it's as Yeshir. That's not true. That's not the original mention of Yesiyah Mitzrayim. The original mention of Yesiyah Mitzrayim is in the third pedic of Kiryat Shema. In the third pedic of Kiryat Shema, in the last pasuk, it says very clearly, it says, Ani Adonai Eloichem, asher hoseti etchem eretz v'sraim, v'yot lachem l'Elohim, ani Adonai Eloichem. And Harambam says that that is, that reading of that pasuk is done even at night, even though we don't have the, have the mitzvah of tzitzit at night. We say that pedic specifically because we have to remember Yesiyah Mitzrayim. That's the pasuk in the Barim to show that you have to mention Yesiyah Mitzrayim every single day. But the question continues because later, uh, earlier in Shemot, Perek Yod Gimel Pasuk Het, right, if we turn to Perek Yod Gimel Pasuk Het, it says specifically the night of Pesach, right? It says, Bayomahu on that day, Pesach night, you have to you have an obligation in Mitzvah Aseh to tell over the story of Yesiyah Messiah. So what's the difference between all year long, 365 days of the year, Kol Yem Hayecha, and the question and the mitzvah of Yetziah Messiah on um, on Lil Pesach? Now the answers that I'm going to take are formulated by a very, very up-and-coming Talmi Hacham, Rabbi in, um, 
in Israel. He lives in Alon Shlutz. His name is Rabbi Yosef Svirimon. He writes a lot of books in English and Hebrew. He's very available on the internet. And he organizes the answers into five different categories. And I'm going to go through them with you now over the next 25 minutes. And I'm going to ask you to do something at home for me. I'm going to ask you to pick the favorite one that you like that most connects to, to what you're feeling. Uh, and to be able to um, either reflect it back to us tonight on the class in the last couple of minutes to tell me what your favorite was and why. And also, uh, and also to be able to say it over at the, uh, at the Pesach night, Lila said at the Haggadah table. A lot of people on these classes very possibly will be running their Sedarim for the first time ever alone. So you should utilize, and it's very nervous for a lot of the women, for sure, if they've never uh, prepared Pesach before because they've traveled, or for even the men who've never organized the Seder for themselves. And it's always nice for the father and the mother of the house in order to be able to teach some Torah to their children besides the regular Haggadah read. Okay, so let's, let's, we're going to have five reasons. We're going to start with one. Um, I'm sure there's a way, if you raise your hand or if you raise your hand in the chat, We'll be able to, um, you'll be able to ask questions uh, or just unmute yourself and ask a question. Here we go. First answer. Throughout the year, the mitzvah is to remember and to remind oneself of Yisiyah Messiah. But on the night of the Seder, the mitzvah is not only to mentally remember in your mind, but to physically retell it to other people. And that means, according to some of the poskim, that it's, you have to utilize a Socratic method when you're telling over the story of a question and answer. Now, what section of the Haggadah do we utilize to fulfill this question and answer? It's simple. The questions we ask the four sons or, and the Manashana. So the first difference is that every night before I go to bed and I say, Kiryat Shema, I'm remembering the fact that there was a historical experience called uh, Yisya Masai. But on Leila Seder, you have to tell the story to another person, okay, uh, in the format of questions and answers. And we actually find that in our Haggadah. Uh, side note is that if a person finds themselves home alone, according to one opinion, not a majority of the opinions, according to one opinion, he cannot fulfill this mitzvah if this is the reason why we, uh, if this is the reason why we have the, the storytelling, because he has nobody to tell it over to. Uh, the, most of the opinions today say that if you're sitting home alone, you could ask and answer the questions that you're saying. The second reason, throughout the year, we mention only the end result. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu took us out of Mitzrayim. But on Leila Seder, on Leila Seder, we don't only discuss what happened at the end result. We discuss the entire process from beginning to end. Meaning, right, that we start, right, we start with Abdut and we end with Herut. We start with Me'afela, we start in a period of darkness and it's a period of fog a period of doubt, a period of difficulty, but we end the orgado. So all year long when I go to sleep, I'm saying, but during the Lil Seder, I'm starting at the beginning and I am discussing the entire process. Um, are there any questions so far? Any questions? Just unmute yourself and ask the question. That's fine. Okay. The third reason. The third reason is that the first, the third dis difference is that on Lil Hasidah, you have to use what we call props. Props means physical things in order to tell the story with. All year long, I could tell the story and result of the story, and I would fulfill Yatsayyid de Habatu. But when it comes to Lila Seder, we know it's famous that we say, Lo uh, Yatsayyid Habatu, Ella, unless that you point it out 
three different. Wow, blast from the past. How are you? Nice to see you, Ari. <laughs> On Leila said that you have to point out, not point out physically the Pesach, but you have to state Pesach, Matzah, and Marot. So the, the, the concept over there is that the Hachamim want to make the Lila Seder much more integrated with all your different senses. It's not only utilizing memory alone, but it's utilizing the sense of touch, it's utilizing the sense of smell, it's utilizing the sound, and so on and so forth. And it's actually might be according to some opinions that the mitzvah, it might be necessary. It's necessary, and you do not fulfill the obligation of the of the mitzvah of telling over unless you point out those those props. <clears throat> One second. Okay. The fourth answer, the fourth difference between um, the fourth difference between Lila Pesach and every single night is very meaningful to me. Um, and I hope meaningful to you. All year long, I state the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu took us out of Mitzrayim without any response from me. Without any response from me. But on the Seder night, according to some opinions, the entire purpose for retelling the story is to get you to a point of L'Halil. That means, yes, we are mentioning what happened in the past. But the, in, the climax of the evening is the halil. So whereas every night during the year, I can retell the story and fall asleep, the reaction, the spontaneous reaction to the retelling of the story causes a teguva, a reaction in me, and, and spurs me on to think HaKadosh Baruch now, if you open up a Sefer Tehidim, uh, not many people know, or some people know, that in Sefer Tehidim is found the Hallel that we read in our Sidurim. And if you look at Perek Kof Yod Rimel, 113, you will see just from the first two chapters, just from the first two chapters, how the experience that we had of God's miracles in Mishraim, Walking through Kiryat Yamsuf to the Reed Sea and getting out is led Miriam and the entire nation to sing a song as Yashir Moshe of Israel. But the night of Pesach, you are supposed to sing Hallel with the utmost amount of emotion because it starts Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Abdeh, Adonai, Hallelujah, Shem, Adonai. We're saying, Praise you, Hashem. The servants of Hashem, because we're no longer servants of whom? Of Paro. Hallelujah. It's Shem Adonai. Me'atab Adonai. From here to the end of the earth. Me'mizlach Shemesh Ad Me'vo'ah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Me'hulal Shem Adonai. Ramal Kul Goyim Adonai. Hashem is above all the other Goyim. We just witnessed that when he overturned all of Misraim. Mika Adonai Eloheinu. Who is like you, God? You're not like the Egyptian God. Who is throned on high. He raises the poor from the dust. I'm sorry. <laughs> he sees what is below in the heaven and the earth. He takes a nation who is poor and lowly and he raises them up from the garbage bins. He raises, raises up the poor person. Right, in order to set them with great men. Chapter 2 speaks specifically about what we just went through. When the Jewish people left Mishraim, from a foreign nation. And then it asks the question, it's specifically, I don't know how many people realize this when we're reading this on Rosh Chodesh and throughout all the holidays, that these Tehillim were specifically supposed to bring up the memory of Zechel Yisriyam Islam. Hayam Ra'ave Anos, the sea ran. Hayaden Yisob Le'ahod, the Jordan uh, ran backward. Hehadim Akiru Ke'ilim Gevaokim Neson, Malecha Hayam Kenu Kitanus. What is the water running away from? Hayaden Yisob Le'ahod, what is the Jordan running away from? 
מלפני אדון חולי ארץ. ‫שמעתי <laughs> before the Seder, so that when you're sitting at the Seder, right, and you just found out that HaKadosh Baruch Hu took our people out of Mitzrayim, the next, the, the immediate reaction of a Jewish person who understands the story is to praise, 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 and sing his praises to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Let's go to the fifth reason. Throughout the year, we tell the story as something that happened in the past. Remember, I'm going to ask you at the end of this call for you to tell me which one of, this, which one of the five reasons of the differences between every single night of the year and Pesach night you like the best. The fifth answer is, throughout the year, we tell the story from the past. But on the night of the Seder, right, we know famously, Chayav Adam leharotet atzmo ki idu hu yatsam imsayim. that we're not telling the, the, the story from the past, but it, we, are re, we are dramatizing the evening in order to sort of experience the event ourselves that night, as if we were leaving Egypt. That is a very difficult thing that requires parents to be very creative. Um, I know some parents I know very well, you might be listening, Uh, went out to a store and buy little plastic frogs and they hide them underneath the plates. Some people fill up uh, some glasses with uh, dot, red dye with water. Other people bring some type of pets into the house. I heard one of my dear, dear friends uh, actually have a goat, was it a goat, uh, tied in the backyard and it was brain. Um, we need to make sure that we do everything possible to And enact and re-experience the event ourselves. I know that some families uh, get really, really creative um, and they dress up that evening in robes and in, uh, in different types of uh, clothing in order to make sure to, to fulfill this concept of Hayav Adam Nehar Otot Atzmo Ki Ilu Hu Yatsa Misraim. But I want to take it one step further in the few minutes we have remaining. There's a concept Very, very deep concept that I, I'm not sure that I understand. Um, that is the concept of the Maharal Mi Prague connected to a concept in, in the Ramhal, in the Rebbe Moshe Haim Luzato, and a concept um, that Rav Kook speaks about as well. <clears throat> it's very, very special in that it, it, it crosses all And breaks all our concepts of time and uh, and 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 the time space continuing and different levels of dimensions according to this concept the night of the 15th and you could choose to leave this if this is not for you if it's not to your taste it's fine but according to this concept that of cook quotes and utilizing that I'm how the model that this evening the was set aside as the night of freedom, which we would call Lel Shimurim. It's kept, this, this night is kept as to represent and unleash the power of freedom in you personally that night. In other words, what B'nai Israel did on the 15th of Nisan 3,000 years ago was tap into a concept that that day was set aside for. And that's why they were freed that night. And if they would have tried a week prior, it wouldn't have worked. There are concepts in Pekah, in, in Pekah Bota. I remember Mishnah saying that the certain key miracles were, were, were programmed into the blueprint of creation back during B'riyat Ta'olam. 
And Rav Kook wants to say that the forces of freedom return each year on this night. The forces of independence, to make your own choices instead of being a slave, the forces of the sovereignty of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the forces of uprooting evil from the world. And that's why, if you, if you really want to capitalize on this concept, you could understand when it says early on in the Haggadah, it says, uh, Because what we're doing this evening, ladies and gentlemen and children, is we're not talking about a historical experience. We're not talking about something that happened in the past. We are recreating and we are experiencing the freedom right now. And we talk a lot about this in school, right? One of our teachers discusses the whole concept of freedom of constraints and that you have freedom, freedom through constraints. The, pro, the, the concept is recognizing my own personal Yisiyat Mislam that night. And I gave a class last year that said, everybody needs to think and ponder before the Saturday night and say, how can I really fulfill Haram Bam's obligation to see myself as being free? It's freeing yourself from certain habits of the mind that you might have locked yourself into for the 364 days beforehand and saying, I am going to experience my own freedom, my own herut, my own sense of independence from certain bad habits of the mind and bad habits of the body that I might have locked or might have imprisoned me or might have enslaved me in the previous year. That's a very difficult thing. That means that the night of Leil HaSedet is not simply sitting back and telling a historical story. One needs to really try to awaken in themselves a personal victory, a personal freeing from something that has been enslaving him or her throughout the past. That's an extraordinary thing. And Rav Cook would say, that that is the night to do it. And I just want to quote for you. <clears throat> right? That Amchal explains that on each of our festivals, the world is under a similar influence, like that under which it was under at the time of the original event. Rav Kook continues, it must come to be re revealed again during its time, the same time that has been determined in advance so that the power of the holy light will be revealed in the world. The power of the holy impressions comes from the power of the special virtues of that time. I must admit, I don't really understand this concept. And I might, and I need to let you know that I don't really understand the depth of what Wolf Cook is trying to say over here. But it's a valuable, interesting opportunity for us to recognize that the night of the said that is much more than a history class that we tell over to our children, but a concept that has been woven into the fabric of time from the beginning of creation. It's a new concept for me. It might be a new concept for you, but I urge you to consider it because he says on this, Rav Rimon says, on this night each year, the force of freedom is evoked in the world. The force to return to our natural independence, the force to return uh, to the perfect world under HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the force to uproot evil from the world, the force to fulfill our specially go special godly mission in the world. It's an interesting idea. I'm not sure if you're willing to accept it. So let's review in the last uh, few minutes. The question was, Manishtana, what is the difference of this night and all the other nights when it comes to the specific mitzvah of talking about Yisiyah Mitzrayim. Number one, the first difference that we mentioned, <coughs> excuse me one second, was that all year long, it's only a memory. Now I have to tell the story. Second answer was all year long, I only talk about the totza'ah, the end result. But on this night, I talk about the entire process. The third answer, is that this night we must use props. And anybody who does not use props and point or lift to most of a Pesach, Masa, Umaror does not fulfill his obligation. The third answer is that this night, when you tell over the story, it has to, it demands a response 
from the reader in terms of halil. You must praise God when you, uh, when, when you tell over the story. And the fifth answer, maybe the most difficult one, is that a person needs to tell over the story in a way where it is not just a history lesson for him, but is literally a reenacting where you can experience the freedom yourself. Creativity will be required, but not only creativity, depth of thinking, preparation. And you can literally find something that you free yourself from, that you've been enslaved to either mentally or physically uh, over the last year, that you, so you can experience the true happiness of being a free person on Leil Hasid. Um, I, am, I invite anybody here to raise their hand, uh, unmute yourself and tell me uh, which of these five you found um, specifically touched you and, uh, and why? Anyone? Hi, Rabbi. Well, which um, one was that, Mo? Uh, so I, um, I've been contemplating this over the years. Uh, there's no question that, re that the last reason um, of the... One second, one second, what? He, he wants to use the basement for his uh, video game, yeah. It's very important. <laughs> um, yeah, the the, the, free, the uh, freeing yourself of bad habits, of introspection, uh, even though we kind of do that on the Yamim Nuraim, um, there's a different vantage point when it comes to this time of year. I don't know what it is exactly, but the uh, maybe it's the freedom concept. Um, there's no question all the other things you pointed out are important, and you know I, I, I try to participate in all of them, but I try to see what can I change as my, in my person, in my, what am I, what's holding me back, what hametz is holding me back that I want to get rid of in a sense, you know, uh, whatever. Fantastic. So you, you picked up on the fifth point. I owe, it's the most difficult, but I think the, it's very rewarding and it's, it's, it brings yeah. you to the right place. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, well, I wanted to thank everybody. I wanted to thank the SCA. Uh, for hosting the uh, Day of Learning in, uh, during this very, very difficult time. I want to urge everybody to search out uh, their own selves in order to find uh, what we were just talking about, uh, anything that you could free yourself from, and then you'd be taking an, the opportunity that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has, been given, has given us with this virus uh, in order to really find what is really important in life and what we should capitalize on and what we should, uh, and what we should leave behind. I urge you all, Never to forget. This is a never to forget you moment. For the rest of your lives, in two decades from now, we should always remember the lessons that we learned and the positives that we take out of this experience and never forget it so that Kadosh Baruch Hu doesn't need to send us a message again in order for us to go through this. Because if we do forget it, it might. Thank you very much. I wish everybody a great, great, great week. Be safe, be healthy. And if you have any questions, you could send me an email, rabbimoseshaber at gmail.com, rabbimoseshaber at gmail.com. Have a great evening. Hazak baruch to the SCA.